know what a war is. When we look at the history, Sun Chu said that a uh, Chinese general 2000 years ago, there is going to be always war. But today, the war is not just in the field. Before I send my troops, what is the best way to learn about you? Years ago, before cybersecurity, before technology was so dominant, people used to send uh, spies. Spies used to report everything back and the armies used to shape based on the information from the spies. Today, of course, there are still spies, there are still James Bond movies, but there is now something much more effective. So why should I train someone, uh, risk someone's life, send it to a country and collect information? Why should I hire insiders? Which happens, still happens. Why not create a virus, a malware, send it through, learn about everything that I have. I keep asking this question. Who knows you better? Your wife, your mom, or your phone? Probably the answer is the phone. This applies in technology. This applies in everything. T technology knows way too much stuff about us. Back to your question, cyber warfare. So if I know how many troops you have, how many airplanes you have, where you hide them, through your digital infrastructure, isn't it easier for me to attack them? Today, as you said, we can see it clearly. Um, troops are going to some countries, but then we see some uh, F-35, whatever, some uh, jets hitting some certain key areas. How? Because they know exactly where the weapons are hidden. And this is all because of the attacks. And this happens in the digital space, which we call cyber warfare. Definitely, yes. We always teach ourselves that, hey, once it's something on the internet, it's going to stay in the internet. Once we share, today, when we share photos, for example, it is not just sharing where you are, but if you can collect all these photos collectively, you can drive digitally the environment. If you remember years ago, you are not, you are not allowed to take photos in uh, military areas. They used to say, no photos, military restricted areas. Today, they have the space stations, which they show us everything. So, and there is no way you can hide it. You have to work underground. Same with phones, same with everything else. When we share, we should be thinking what we share, how we share. We should, you know, if not necessary, you should not share. If you're gonna share, you should know what you're sharing. And you might think you are nobody but you don't know what you're gonna to become tomorrow. So today you might be a teenager, or you might be a CISO in a small company, a cybersecurity manager in a small company, but tomorrow you can change. I mean, look at myself, for example. 15 years ago, I, I was a small business owner in Australia. Last year, I was a CISO in a global bank. This year, I am a CISO in a global cybersecurity firm. Could I imagine 20 years ago? What if I shared some information, um, which can be used against, the, against me. Another example, you know the ex-German consular, Merkel. Hackers found pictures when she was 17. She went to a new beach and they found her pictures and they tried to blackmail her. Luckily, this was in Germany and she didn't care. As a result, the pictures were released. Just imagine, this was in a country where new photos would be never accepted. I mean, uh, German culture is a bit more relaxed. If this happened in some countries, for example, Turkey, probably she had no, ch no chance to get reselected. So you might be 17 now, you might be sharing something now, but think about what, how it can hit you tomorrow. It just happened, Russia. They, you know, they had their sanctions, they built their own internet. We know that Russia was not the first country who tried that. Now let's move the film back 20, 30, 50 years ago. How was the internet found? Then we look, it was all military based, network based to share information. Because back then there was a cold war and internet was built just in case attack happens. So honestly, this is not something new. This is how the internet was found, but then it grew so much that even they couldn't expect it. That's why we ran out of IP addresses. We invented IPv6. 
back to your question, I think we're going to see this more and more happen. Happen in one of the countries. They had a huge DDoS attack. The only way to stop this DDoS attack was to cut the internet to the outside world. So it wasn't, uh, it wasn't just uh, cyber warfare. It was some hacker group attacking big numbers. And as a result, the defense mechanism was cut the internet to the outside world until the attack went away. I'm not saying this is the best solution, but going forward, you're going to see more and more this happening. Resilience is the key. We should have, it like, doesn't matter what product you use. Currently, I'm working for Vanda. Uh, before that, I mean, we are in an event right now. There are lots of vendors. I'm giving you unlimited budget. Go buy all these vendors. Is it going to secure you? Probably not. Why? Uh, because there is a first thing that you have to do is create a risk assessment. And you have to assume that you can get breached any second, any time. If you have a breach mindset, then doesn't matter what kind of attack happens. You need to, like, you know you're going to die one day. You are a human, you were born, you grow up, and hopefully you're going to live wrong life, healthy life. One day the journey is going to end. But we still live as we're never going to die. Same applies to hacking. You should assume you are never going to get hacked, but you should prepare as you can get hacked any second. If you do that, you will have a defense in depth strategy. You will have backup strategy. You will have incident response strategy. You will have vendor strategy. You will have, you know, I can keep talking and, talk and talking, but the first thing is no. You can get hacked because there's two types of organizations. One, they know they've been hacked. Two, they don't. Going forward, there is going to be two types of organization. One, they take the right measures not to get hacked. They do the right practices. Two, people still get going to get hacked. Great question. Yes, Global CISO Forum is a non-profit organization which aims to build a community. Who are CISOs? CISOs are the people they are front of the line, the generals that build the security strategy and try to help the rest of the organization to be even more secure. With Global CISO Forum, we aim to bring all these people together, to create a community, to act together, to learn from each other's mistakes, to share our experiences, and more importantly, to learn from each other to be more secure. And for that, like in everything, you can go to any country in the world, you will see a Chinatown. You will see where Turks are in one community. You will see Indians in one community. Why? Because they think alike, they act alike, they lack the same food. Same applies to cybersecurity. We're building a community where people with the same interests are going to be there to help each other to be more secure, to learn from each other. And for that, I'm inviting everybody. Please come and join us. GlobalCISOFORM.com. Totally free uh, community, non-profit organization, which we need people like you to join us to be better together.